Thank you for joining me. I've got another one of Lou Maui's games here, and this one against Olga Drunhinge. Um, I wasn't able to find any pictures of her online. She was born in 1984. She's from Russia. Uh, she has the master rating of 2245, but she has no titles, just like Lou Maui. Also pretty hard to find pictures of Lou Maui. Even the International Chess Federation doesn't have a picture of her. Uh, she's rated 2399. She was born in 2010, so she's, she's almost, actually this year she will be 13 in March. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this rapid chess cam. You can see the time controls right there. Both players have 15 minutes on the clock. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Lu Maui begins with pawn to e4, and we have c5 by black. So we have the Sicilian defense. Now knight to c3 by Lu Maui, and pawn to d6, as you normally do in the Sicilian. And now pawn to f4 by Lu Maui. So this is the Grand Prix attack variation of the Sicilian defense now. And black plays knight to c6. We now have knight to f3 by Lu Maui, and now pawn to g6. I like it, looking like a dragon, kind of bring the bishop to g7. Uh, this is how I would play if I was playing black. We now have bishop to b5 by Lu Maui, attacking the knight, and now bishop to g7, as expected by black. Uh, probably would have been better for pawn structure purposes to play bishop to d7 here, preventing just a little bit of destabilization of pawn structure, but we'll continue. Lu Maui plays the best move in the position, removing the knight with bishop captures on c6. We, of course, have b captures c6, and now Lu Maui plays pawn to d3. Rook now to b8, and now Lu Maui goes ahead and castles. Pawn to e6 is now played here, and this was not the best move in the position. And it is as of this move, so we're on move eight, that we have a brand new game. There were a couple of Grand Master games that were played up until the point just before this. So in those games, one Grand Master played bishop to g4, and the other actually played knight to f6. Both of these are much better moves than were actually played on the board. But uh, this is a rather long game, so we'll continue with the variation that happened on the board. We had pawn to e6. Now Lu Maui plays queen to e1. We now have knight to e7 by black. Computer suggests it would probably be better to go ahead and push this pawn here, uh, just initiating an attack, uh, even though black's not uh, really got their pieces developed. But we'll go ahead and continue. We have queen to h4 by Lu Maui. She should have instead played pawn to b3 here, but we'll go ahead and continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. So Lu Maui plays queen to h4. We now have pawn to h6 by black. Probably would have been better to go ahead and get the bishop over here, get him off the back rank, but we'll continue. We now have king to h1 by Lu Maui. This is considered a blunder. E5 is the best option here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that uh, variation with pawn to E5. So instead, Lu Maui should have played pawn to E5 here. Best for black would be to go ahead and castle. And then knight to E4 by white would be best. Knight comes to F5, attacking the queen. Queen back to F2. Now pawn to h5 would be best for black. Pawn now captures on d6 would be best for white. Knight captures on d6. Knight now captures on c5. And this would have been a better way to play for Lu Maui. All of her pieces are, you know, well activated and she has more space on the chessboard. Things are just kind of going her way. But that's not what happened on the chessboard, so we'll go ahead and go back to that now. So Lu Maui plays king to h1, and we continue. We now have rook down to b4 by black, and the computer suggesting actually castling would have been the best option in this position, but again, we will just go ahead and continue. We now have pawn to a3 by Lu Maui, best possible move in position, 
and black is forced to move the rook back to b7. Actually would have been better just to move the rook all the way back to b8, so kind of a wasted move in the position, but we continue. Queen now to g3 by Lu Mao Yi, and now king to f8 for some reason by black. This makes no sense. This is a complete blunder. She should have played something like pawn to, to c4, and she would have had a pretty equal position. We'll go ahead and continue though with what actually happened on the chessboard. We now have knight to h4 by Lu Ma Yi, and this is considered a missed win by Stockfish. So we'll kind of take a look at what she should have played here. We'll go ahead and go back. As Lu Ma Yi should have played pawn to e5. So pawn to e5. Knight would come to f5, would be best for black. Queen back to f2. Now knight to d4 would be best for black. Knight captures on d4 for white. Now we have queen captures on d4. And this would have been a superior position for Lu Ma Yi. Uh, all of her pieces, again, are coordinated and black just, yeah, <laughs> has a lot to take care of. Anyway, we'll go back to with what actually happened on the chessboard. So Lu Ma Yi plays knight to h4 and we continue we now have pawn to d5 by black lu ma yi plays pawn to f5 giving up an advantage again this is a bit of a blunder she should have instead played queen back to f2 with this f5 move being a blunder black should be able to take advantage and actually get an overall lead in the position. This would have been a fantastic uh, situation for black if they would have played correctly. So yeah, Lu Yi should have played queen back to f2. We're going to go ahead and continue because black does start by playing the correct moves. She plays the best possible move in the position. She plays e captures on f5. We have pawn captures on f5 by Lu Yi. So e captures f5 as well. Knight now captures on f5, best possible move for black. And now knight captures knight on f5, best move that Lu Yi can play in this position. And now bishop captures on f5. Yeah, black is actually doing better now. So Lu Yi blundered and let black back into this game. We now have knight to a4 by Lu Ma Yi. I guess targeting this pawn seems like a really weak move in the position. Better would have been again just to go ahead and move the queen here to f2. But we're going to go ahead and continue with what happened on the chessboard. We have king now to g8 by black. Some strange king moves here. Uh, best would be just to go ahead and push the pawn here and disrupt Lu Ma Yi's pawn structure, but we'll continue. Lu Ma Yi does grab the c5 pawn, best possible move for her. And now black does play the best possible move in position, rook to e7. Lu Ma Yi develops her bishop finally to f4. And now we have king to h7. This is the best move in the position for black. Pawn now to c3, also the best move. And now we have pawn to d4 by black. Better would have been probably just to go ahead and double the rooks here. But again, we're just going to go ahead and continue with happen what happened on the chessboard. Lu Ma Yi plays pawn to c4. We now have queen to b6 by black. And Lu Ma Yi plays pawn to b4 defending the knight. We now do see the rooks doubling with rook h to e8 for black. And Lu Ma Yi challenges with rook a to e1 here. We now have the best possible move in the position by black, playing pawn to a5. We now have the best possible move for Lu Ma Yi. She plays rook captures on e7. We have rook captures on e7, of course, by black as well. And now Lu Ma Yi not allowing black to take over the e-file plays rook to e1. Better would have been actually to drop the bishop back first, defending and kind of supporting this issue over here. So this is actually a mistake by Lu Ma Yi, but we're going to go ahead and continue with what happened on the chessboard. If you notice, both players are running very low on time here, less than a minute for both of them. So likely to make some more mistakes under time duress. We now have rook captures on e1 by black and now queen of course captures on e1 by Lu Ma Yi. 
pawn now captures on b4 by black and pawn captures back uh, by Lu Maoyi. Black now moves her queen back to a7. And now Lu Maoyi plays pawn to h3. This is the best move in the position. Bishop now to f6 by black. And Lu Maoyi plays queen to e8 here. Would have been better. So this is considered a mistake. Would have been better to move the bishop to d6 but again we're just going to go ahead and continue with what happened on the chessboard as like i said this is a rather long game we now have the best possible move in the position by black queen to e7 lu Maoyi goes ahead and captures the pawn on c6 and now we have bishop to h4 by black lu Maoyi moves her knight to e4 here this is the best move in the position we have queen captures on b4 by black. Uh, better would have actually just been to go ahead and capture the knight here. So this was a mistake. Bishop captures knight, just kind of destabilizes the pawn structure. So it seemed like the free pawn was better, but that's not the way to play. Anyway, we will continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. Lu Mao Yi plays the best move in the position. Queen to d5. We now have queen back to e7 for black. This is the best move. That can be played and Lu Maoyi of course captures that d4 pawn. We now have pawn to g5 by black attacking the bishop. Better would have been actually to offer the queen trade just put the queen on uh, d8. That would have been a better way to de-escalate the position but we'll again continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. Lu Maoyi moves her bishop to d6 attacking the queen. We have queen to e6 by black and now Lu Maoyi moves her king to h2. Would have been better actually to reposition the bishop here to f8. That would have been a better move. But again, yeah, they don't have very much time on their clock. So it's tough for them to find the best move. They don't have the time that we do to analyze the position. And we'll continue. We now have the best move for black, king to g6. Lu Maoyi plays pawn to g3, trapping the bishop. We have bishop now captures on g3, and now king captures on g3 by Lu Maoyi. Now bishop captures on h3 by black, and Lu Maoyi plays queen to f6. Rather than trading queens, because if you trade queens, so if black plays queen takes queen, um, then... Yeah, you can capture the queen back and leave the bishop hanging. So instead, black moves the king, trying to prevent this. But best actually was to trade queens here. Lu Maoyi now does capture the queen. Queen takes queen. And of course, bishop captures back on e6. Only way to play. And now knight to f6 by Lu Maoyi. Check. The king moves to g6 here. And now Lu Maoyi defends her knight with bishop to e7. We have pawn to h5 by black. And Lu Maoyi advances her c pawn, the queen candidate, to c5. We have pawn to h4, check, which is the best move in the position for black. But Lu Maoyi plays king to f3, which is interesting. Best would have actually been to move the king to h2. So I'm a bit baffled as to why Lu Maoyi would have played this move. It seems like a bad idea. Of course, the knight is taking away the squares from the bishop, but normally you don't put your king on a light square if all your opponent has is a light squared bishop. You can just avoid light squares and no tricks can happen. Not a lot of time on the clocks, so we will continue. Best possible move in the position by black, king to f5, just activating that king. Lu Maoyi plays the best possible response, pawn to d4. And now we have bishop back to c8 by black. Lu Maoyi advances the d-pawn, d5 is played. King now to e5 by black, definitely a solid way to play in the position. And now pawn to c6 by Lu Maoyi. We have a checking move now by black, so that's... Uh, Pawn to g4, only a solid way to play in the position. Now king to g2 by Lu Maoyi, uh, one of the best moves. Better would have been to move it to f2. Like normally you want to put them on dark squares. If you're facing a light squared bishop, 
save yourself the calculation because you don't have any clock time and just stay off those light squares. But anyway, we'll continue. We now have pawn to g3 by black and Lu Maoyi plays pawn to d6 here. We have king to e6, best possible move in the position. And now Lu Maoyi also plays the best possible move, king to f3 here. We have pawn now to h4 and actually... I, I guess she actually made this move, but she ran out of time before she made the move. So Lu Maoyi actually wins this one on time. Uh, obviously, there's no way to win anyway, as these pawns are all just going to fall anyway. And then Lu Maoyi would be able to get her king up there to help promote the pawn, if need be. She might be able to pull it off just with the pieces she's got up there. But yeah. Uh, Black ran out of time on this one, so Lu Maoyi won this rapid round against this other uh, player. Again, Olga, I didn't have any pictures of her, but she is a master as far as her school, score, uh, you know, 2245. That is high enough to be an actual master, just for whatever reason. Lu Maoyi and this player, Olga, neither of them have actually got their titles yet, for whatever reason. Uh, Lu Maoyi, I think she's waiting just to go straight to Grand Master. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe as I will be doing game reviews every day. I also do chess classes, so if you'd like to take some classes, I do group and individual classes online. You can check that out on Patreon or you can just you know comment in the in uh, mention it in the comments and uh, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, thank you for joining me, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.